Hey guys, I'm Zachary Gray, and today we're going to be looking for North America's two most famous pit vipers, the Cottonmouth and the Copperhead. Let's go. The first snake on our list to find today is a Cottonmouth. They're a pretty common snake here in Louisiana. So driving these gravel roads is a good way to find one basking out in the sunlight. Have a look at this. This is a baby cottonmouth. This isn't exactly what we're looking for, but this is cool to show you guys. Now if you come down here, the baby cottonmouths are very pretty in my opinion. Look at all these pretty bands. Got a couple broken bands right there. And they're really unique little pattern, but a lot of people confuse these for copperheads. The banding is very similar, and I can understand the coloration looks a bit similar to somebody who's not experienced with snakes. Now you can see, he's such a baby, he's got a little baby tail, a little yellow tail. And what they'll do is they'll cordial lure with that tail to attract skinks and mice and anything that would want to think that that tail is a worm. This is a little tiny baby, but not a newborn. I'd say it's about mm, probably a little less than a year old. This will probably be last year's baby. Look at him, he's looking straight at the camera. Now, there's a myth going around that Baby venomous snakes are more dangerous than the adults. They say that, oh, the babies don't have control over their venom. That's not true at all. These guys have very good control of their venom, and uh, they're no more deadly than the adults. In fact, they're less deadly. However, they do still have venom in there, and uh, it most likely wouldn't kill you, but you could probably end up with an amputation or uh, definitely a couple days or even a week or two in the hospital from one of these little guys, but always seek medical attention if you get bit by any venomous snake of any size. That's my rule, and uh, I believe that we could save some lives if everybody followed that rule. Cute little guy to find, but we need to find a bigger one. See you, little buddy. All right, we've got a snake up here, but it is definitely not a water moccasin. I think it's a king snake. This is a non-venomous species. Not what we're looking for, but that's a gorgeous snake. Look at him. He's rattling his tail at me, so he's definitely not happy. This has been a really good spring for king snakes. I found quite a few of them. Now what's special about king snakes is they would eat the two snakes that we're looking for. These guys are snake specialists, and that's why they're called king snakes. They're the king of snakes. They eat other snakes. And they'll even eat a venomous snake. They'll eat a water moccasin, a copperhead, a rattlesnake, virtually anything that they can eat basically overpower and constrict, they will eat. Gorgeous coloration and that speckled pattern helps them to camouflage all up in these reeds. They're very camouflaged, believe it or not, even with that pretty pattern. Gorgeous snake, but we're not, that's not what we're looking for. But it is nice to pick something up that doesn't want to kill me. Awesome little guy. All right, see you little buddy. It looks like a lot of completely harmless species of snakes, just like this king snake, are trying to warm up in the road today as well. You gotta be really careful when looking for snakes while driving because some of the smaller species are very difficult to spot. Check this little guy out. Look, this is a little decayed snake. Check that out. Very cool little guy. Didn't startle him at all coming up and filming him like we just did. Cute little guy. I would have to say, I'm sorry, this would be a female. Now this kind of snake would be a non-venomous snake, and this would be a massive decay snake, absolutely massive. They don't get much bigger than this. The decay snakes have all these little checkered patterns on them, and they're very easy to tell from a venomous snake, because these snakes are so, so small, you're not even going to have a newborn copperhead or cottonmouth be this small. So you automatically know if you're here in the United States, if you see a little tiny brown snake that's this small, there's no way it's going to be venomous, not even close. And it's got a really tiny head. That's a big difference from copperheads and cottonmouths as their babies, because they normally have big square heads. He's going to have a little tiny narrow head. Look at how cute that is. And I mean, it seems like it's a baby snake, but this is a full grown snake right here. This is an adult decay snake. Beautiful little snake. Let's go ahead and put him down. You ready? Woo! Get on your way, little fella. Got a water snake right here. This thing looks just like just like a cottonmouth, but I can tell that it wasn't a cottonmouth very quickly. Hey, buddy, are you gonna bite? Are you gonna bite? No, he's not gonna bite. 
You okay? A little bit unhealthy, a little bit skinny for a water snake. Now this would be a yellow belly. What you got in your mouth? It's like moving his mouth up and down. Might be something wrong with him. Whoop, okay. No, he should be fine then. He's trying to bite me face. Well, not really the most gorgeous snake, but they've got a bright yellow belly and kind of just a drab, you know, mud colored top. They can be a blackish color and you can see why. Oh, don't bite me. Okay, don't bite me. You can see why people would confuse these snakes for a water moccasin. Look at him, he's shaping his head like a diamond, making you think that he is a venomous snake. This is a non-venomous species, so if he did end up biting me, it would just hurt. He's heading to this water, so that's where we're gonna go ahead and put him. Not what we're looking for, we're looking for a water moccasin, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to find one of those pretty soon, but this is definitely one that people would confuse for a water moccasin. Water snakes are the easiest snake to confuse with a moccasin, but I've seen so many of both that identifying these snakes is almost second nature to me now. I see scales right up here. That looks just like a moccasin. All right, hold on. Park a little ways away from him so I don't spook him. Yep, that's definitely a moccasin. All right, well that, he's pretty content, so I'm just gonna leave him right there for this. That is a big, big moccasin. I would consider this to be a swamp moccasin. It's got a good coloration to it. It's not that solid black dingy color that a lot of them will get here, but it doesn't have its full pattern, and that's the norm for moccasins in this area. I'm kind of just going with the snake right now to keep him from being stressed, because we're about to set him up in a bucket and uh, take him somewhere else to where we can find a copperhead. Now, cotton miles, our local pit viper in this part of Louisiana. There's very few copperheads in this area. Water moccasins are the world's only subaquatic pit viper, and they're a very fat-bodied snake, similar to a copperhead in a lot of ways, but they get much, much bigger. Now what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna go and get a bucket with a lid. That's the best way to contain these guys, because they can bite through a snake bag pretty easily. I'm gonna go get that, and uh, we're gonna go look for a copperhead. All right, I got my little caution. Here. Safely securing the snake for transport is super important. Not only is the bucket safer for me, but it's also less stressful on the snake. And I gotta make sure the lid is on secure. Don't want a venomous snake getting loose in the vehicle. So this is how we're gonna transport her. She's gonna be comfortable in this little bucket, very calm. And uh, we'll, we'll let her go afterwards. But uh, yeah, this is what we're gonna keep her in so we can do our comparison with a copperhead and a cottonmouth. But we've gotta go to Mississippi if we're gonna find a copperhead. Right now where we're going is uh, somebody's property in Mississippi. And we're gonna be looking for a copperhead out here. A lot more upland area, a lot less swamp. And it's a better place to find a copperhead, for sure. You can find them in Louisiana, but it's definitely a better place to look for them. Copperheads are found pretty commonly on farmland and other kinds of disturbed habitat. And one thing's for sure, there are definitely other snakes in the area. Have a look at this. It's a little, it's a little snake shed skin. Let me see. Ah, okay. Let's see what this is. This is a little pygmy rattlesnake shed skin. Looks like a hog nose snake if you look at the head, but this is definitely a pygmy rattlesnake skin. And uh, you can oftentimes tell what kind of snake it is via the pattern and the shape of the head. And I can also tell you that you can find the snake very close to where you find the shed skin. We've actually found uh, in one of our older videos, the Cambrake rattlesnake video, we saw the shed skin. We're like, oh, look at that shed skin. About five feet to the left was a giant Cambrake rattlesnake. It's an oldie but a goodie, but oftentimes you can find snakes like that. But this is definitely one of those little guys. You need to watch out for them because we know they're in the area. Snakes will oftentimes be found either on the edges of wooded areas or under logs. But in disturbed habitat like this, the best way to find snakes is to flip over things that people leave around. This is the good one right here. It's a good board. Oh, yep. There it is. That's a copperhead. Yeah. All right. Come here, buddy. Hello. Don't move too much. Here he is. That is exactly what we're looking for. It's a copperhead. Beautiful little dude. Hello. Oh, he don't look too happy with us messing with him. But he's not doing too much. Now, copperheads are probably our least 
dangerous pit viper here in the United States. All right, I'm gonna bring him over here. Hang on one second. All right, you. Bring him straight up over here. There we go. Very well behaved snake. He's only tried to strike at the hook a couple of times. Gorgeous, gorgeous species of snake. Now they've got a really camouflage pattern and that's why oftentimes people will step on the snake. These guys are responsible for most of the venomous snake bites a year in the United States, but there are very few deaths annually from this snake, maybe one or two every, uh, every half a decade or decade or so, because the venom is very weak compared to that of other pit vipers. But the thing that's been spreading recently is that their venom can't kill a person. It'll just swell up. Well, let me tell you, this snake causes more amputations and recently has been causing just as many deaths as cotton miles because people haven't been going and getting antivenom. They haven't been going and getting medical treatment for them, and that is how people are dying from this snake because they're not taking it as a big deal when they get bit by them. This snake is a big deal. Even though it's got a mild venom, it can still kill you, and you need to get treatment when this snake bites you. Now, copperheads have a really cool banding, kind of like an hourglass pattern on their back. This one's got some really cool broken patterns which can often re result in kind of these mutations like a striped copperhead. Striped copperheads are super rare but they do occur. Alright so now we've got our copperhead here and we've already caught the cotton mouth and it's over in a bucket and we're going to be putting both of them next to each other and we're hopefully going to be able to show you guys how you can identify both of these venomous snakes. All right, guys, so here we have our copperhead that we just caught, and here is the cottonmouth. Now, we want this copperhead to stay as calm as possible. I just want him to sit there because he's pretty tired because we just caught him and he was trying to get away from us. Now, the cottonmouth should be full energy right now because he's been in the bucket. So here is our big fat so cottonmouth, and there they are right next to each other. So as you can see, both these venomous snakes, let me just put this back here, both of these venomous snakes look completely different when they're next to each other. Now we've got both of them completely chilled out right now. Hopefully they can stay like this for as long as possible. Now you can see that the copperhead is much smaller than the cottonmouth, but a copperhead will be able to get to that size, but maybe not as fat and short. A copperhead of that width would probably be a bump longer. Now cottonmouths 100% do get bigger than copperheads, and you can see that their pattern is completely different. But if we go back to that earlier baby cottonmouth that we caught, you can kind of see why a lot of people would confuse them when they're younger, because a cottonmouth would look similar to a copperhead. It would have this kind of weird brown, brownish banding, and this guy's lost most of his banding while he's still got some pattern on his belly and his face. He's still he looks completely different. If you put them next to each other, they're just two completely different snakes. But somehow, people still end up getting them mixed up. So my point with putting them next to each other is to show you guys that they look completely different. Now, I have to be very careful with this cottonmouth. If he goes no towards the copperhead, I need to be able to stop him because cottonmouths will eat other snakes. That's something very important to, for me to recognize. And if he did bite the copperhead, it would be completely my fault here because I put them next to each other. Now, both of them, most of the time when they bite people is either when people are trying to kill them, when people are trying to move them, or when people step on them. And both of these snakes get stepped on constantly because this guy looks exactly like the swamp, and this guy looks exactly like leaves and pine needles. You can tell easily how somebody could step on him because we're right now, right now we're not in the moccasins environment, we're in the copperheads environment. All right, now look at this. This is really cool right here. The cotton mouth is opening his mouth right here, and you can see for just a second, we'll probably get some other shots of it, he was showing his mouth, that white mouth, and that's something that a copperhead, a copperhead will open its mouth at you, but they don't have that solid white mouth like a cotton mouth. And cotton mouths are a lot more defensive than copperheads. They'll coil up into a ball and show that solid white mouth. Now when we're talking about venom with these two snakes, the cotton mouth is by far way, way worse. The venom from these guys is far, far worse than a copperhead, but even these guys' venom is not as potent as a rattlesnake. Now both of these snakes have a hemotoxic venom and that means that they're going to destroy red blood cells when they bite and they actually both cause necrosis and that means you're literally going to rot wherever you get bit by one of these and that's another reason it's very important to get the treatment because if you don't get treatment, even if you don't die from either of these snakes, you can get an amputation which would mean you'd have to lose a limb to save your life which can be really bad. Now if you look at both of them, they're both a very fat bodied snake and they look similar to water snakes and they also look similar to a hognose snake with that fat body. 
and uh, oftentimes water snakes, hognose snakes, all those guys get killed because people think that they're these two snakes or people don't properly identify them. Now I'm going to show you something really quickly. A lot of you guys have a phone. You can go to your app in your phone, your Google app, and basically look at a picture. You can scan the snake with Google and there's a little photo icon there. You click that and you take a picture of them. You don't have to get close to the snake. You zoom in on it. And most of the time when I've done this, it's been fairly accurate. I've actually been kind of shocked, but most of the time the snake that it actually is comes up as the first or second search result, which is really incredible. You know, that's amazing. It's basically, if you ever played Pokemon, it's like you have a Pokedex in your phone that you can scan the animal with to identify it. That's a last resort, basically, if you don't know how to identify a snake. If you can't identify a snake as either one of these guys, just leave it alone. And if you ever get one of these guys around your house or in your house, I am not advocating for people to leave these guys by the houses. They need to stay in the wild, someplace far away from people, in a patch of woods, somewhere that basically people aren't going. And that's what I want. I want these guys to have their own little space away from us. I don't advocate for anybody keeping these guys around the house. People have pets, they have children, and you don't want to have them step on these guys and get bit. That'd be terrible. So I definitely recommend if you have one of these near your house, you call somebody to get it removed. But really, I think this is super cool. This is the first time I've ever put both of these snakes next to each other. And you can just see how drastically different they are. So it's really cool to get both of these guys right next to each other. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Really hope you guys enjoyed it. And I will see you guys next time. All right, time to go.